Good morning. How wonderful it is to be in worship with you this day. Uh, we want to welcome those that are joining us on um, Facebook Live, YouTube, um, and thank you for being with us this morning. I am Pastor Vicki, if you may not know. Uh, I do have a couple more announcements that um, I failed to get um, to Tina in time to get put in the bulletin, so therefore they're not up there. Uh, during, we, we know that we are getting ready to have general conference, um, and those of us that have been here for several years, if you'll notice in your bulletin, you have a sheet of paper in there, an insert, and it has a prayer on it. I'm fixing to pass around a, a clipboard with prayer times. As a church, I want us to do a 24-hour prayer vigil on April the 21st. Um, and so if you would, sign up for a prayer time. And that way we are going to bathe General Conference of the United Methodist Church in prayer. Not only are we as Clark Avenue doing that, but this is um, district-wide that we are going to be doing this. So if you would... And then it gives you a prayer that you can pray along with. Um, with that, I also have, oh, I'm throwing batteries apparently. Um, also, I didn't get it put in there. During general conference, we also are doing a food drive. And so um, this food drive goes to Nourish Up, which feeds folks locally in our area. And so between now and the end of General Conference, which is the 1st of May, I'll, see, I'll have this printed out for you next week, but there are some staples that they are in need of. And um, we're going to be collecting those, and then I will deliver those to one of the churches uh, that is a collection zone. I do believe we've got a few announcements in our bulletins that everybody needs to read. Miss Nancy, you had an announcement? Yes, uh, uh, Jesus has charged us to bring little children unto him. I've started Sunday school for the children, but there's going to be times that I need help, either doing an activity, but mainly some people that are willing to fill in if I'm not able to be there. I want somebody to always be there for the children. If you're willing to offer a Sunday every now and then, Please let me know, and then I'll set up a time to explain the how, the what, and where to find the stuff. So if you think about it, pray about it, and uh, let's continue taking care and uh, sharing Jesus with our children. And you could do it as, as, as pairs. A couple of you could volunteer. Yeah, she she give, she will give you. She has lesson plans laid out, so it's not like you have to come up with something. She will have you completely prepared today before you leave. If you haven't been back there, go check out our children's Sunday school room. They had the upper room this morning, and so you need to go go see that. Do we have any other announcements that we need to make this morning? If not, let us begin our time of worship. We invite you to stand and sing as Mr. Wayne brings in the light of Christ. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. Him no power, evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. 
was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. To be God's children. God's, God's love has, has been, been poured, poured on us, us through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Fear and doubt are gone. Joy, Joy and, and celebration, celebration ring, ring in, in our, our hearts. hearts. Come, let us raise our voices in song. Let, let us, us offer our, our hearts and souls, souls to God in prayer and, prayer and praise. praise. Amen. Amen. May be seated. All right. Where's my young folks? Come right up here. Avery, Chloe, come here. Come here. Turn around here. She's being persnickety, isn't she? She is her grandmother's child. She is her mother's child. So this morning, I want you guys to do me a favor. I want you to look at each other. Let's look at each other's faces. Okay, you don't have, we'll look at the back of your head. So, what do you see when you, when you look at Seth, what do you see? What do you see? Anne Marie, what do you see when you look at Seth? <laughs> <clears throat> Happy. That, oh, that's a good one. Avery, what do you see when you look at your sister Chloe? Happy? Yeah? What what do we see if we look at Ruby? Sad. Pouty. I don't know either. We'll find out in a minute though, Anne Marie. And Marie's worried about you. Oh, so this morning, what I wanted us to, I've got some pictures up here too. And if you look at these people, you might could tell something about them. Just by looking at the pictures, right? You might, they're happy. Yeah. That's me and Pastor and Danny, yeah. So this morning, I want you to know something. As we look at each other, look up here at me. I want us to look in each other's eyes. Because when we look in somebody else's eyes, do you know that we are looking at someone that God loves? Doesn't matter who it is. When you look into the eyes of someone else, you are looking at someone that God loves. That's pretty awesome. And so, I also have something for you. I want you to know, this is mine, but I'll share it with you. When you look at that, what do you see? You know what I see? You see somebody who loves 
you, Jesus. Jesus. That's right. You're looking, when you look in the mirror, you see somebody that Jesus loves. So, this morning, I wanted to make sure that you all don't forget, and I got you each a mirror. So that any time you need to, you can look in the mirror and remember that God loves you. Huh? That's the only colors I got. All the same color. Got them all the same colors. Smart. Smart. I'm learning. All right. I'll share that with you. All right. Well, let's pray. Can we? Can we? Or touch each other's shoulders. <laughs> Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For loving me. For loving me. And for loving others. And for loving others. Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. To love others. To love others. Like you do. Like you do. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. All right, those are yours. This morning, as we go into our time of prayer, one of the other things that um, I forgot to share with you I also want it to be a prayer concern. I got our uh, Fifth Street Ministries um, newsletter on Friday after I left the church. It was in the mailbox. Um, and so April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And so I want to ask that we be in prayer for all the people. And some of you may even relate to that, that have been sexually assaulted. Um, it's a trauma that goes on forever. Um, we just learn. Hopefully we learn how to use it for God's glory and be able to share with someone else. So um, I'm going to hang this on the bulletin board outside of my office. And they also have a few needs that the Fifth Street Ministries needs. Uh, and so if you would like to donate to that, I'll have that hanging back there and you can see that as well. So let us be in prayer for those folks. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer for Miss uh, Alma. She had um, um, a cancer removed and apparently she's, it's still got her down. So how is she doing today? And look at, that, that's, that's an all-day job right there, looking after you. So, yes, let's do keep our sweet Miss Alma in our prayers as well. Do we have any other concerns that we need to share with one another? Any other concerns? Yes, Susan Little, uh, used to be a member here, has breast cancer, and it's a rare type. She's going to um, Cancer Center up at UNC, I think, tomorrow okay. to find out what to do. All right. So, so. Miss Susan Little, um, breast cancer, rare, you said a rare type? Yeah, a rare type of breast cancer. Mm. So. Uh, I ask that you continue, uh, if you'll notice my sister's name on here, uh, Cheryl, she... Um, is moving to Kentucky where my nephew lives, her son. And uh, so she's in the process of swapping doctors. And so she's went to Kentucky last week to see a doctor and ended up in UK hospital. Uh, I think I shared that with you. Um, but Thursday, um, she goes to the um, kidney transplant center to start that process. Uh, and so I ask that you be in prayer for her and my nephew, Nathan, um, as they start that process. I shared with them about my Miss Deborah, or our Miss Deborah, and that she's been a, a kidney recipient for 25 years. 
23. And I said, so sis, you can do this. So if you would, keep her in your prayers. Um, Ed Hoffman is on our list. That is Danny's first cousin. Uh, he has cancer, and it is spreading. And so we ask that you uh, keep Ed in your prayers as well. Any other? Sue? Um, Kim DePiro, the mother and I raised our children together. She moved here six years ago from Army Medical College. But he's, he's been on dialysis for a year and a half now. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, two days a week. He decided to quit dialysis. <coughs> We will be in prayer for her. We will be in prayer for her. What was her name again? Kim. K-I-M-U-E-D-I-E-R-O. Sarah, you had your hand up? I have the prayer to pray. Yes. My father was in a head-off collision on Tuesday. Um, it His dad was going five miles an hour. The other car was going 38. And I'm glad that I didn't get the picture until Tuesday afternoon. I am, we are thankful that <coughs> both folks involved in that accident walked away. Yes. My um, dad said that it was scary. He didn't think he was going to get out of the car. Yeah. So we will, and I'm sure he's nice and sore today, so we will keep him in our prayers. Um, Nancy? I'm, like, oh, I, I'm ready for praises. Well, I'll get uh, back to you. Last Thursday was <laughs> kind of an odd day for me. It started off with uh, Miss, me allowing Miss Ann Register and Sue Cheek to beat me a car. And she was now I had to walk around <laughs> with the walk of shame. But later that afternoon, the wind started blowing. started spinning in my backyard. So I go to the back door to secure the door, and this tree starts coming at me. This is a picture of my house, there's a tree over my house. Oh my God. Big tree. Oh wow. Big like tree. The, the diameter of the Ooh, tree yeah. was between three foot and four foot wide. Oh, my car was parked up under that tree. Oh, the fire department came, they pulled the car out, it has no scratch on it. Oh, wow. wow. The, uh, Outbuilding fog a lot of the way it did knock the chimney off, but when the chimney fell back on my house, the tree was already there and it caught the chimney. <laughs> Let it bounce gently so it didn't hit my house. When the woodcutters come to take the tree off, it raised up and nicely fell into the yard. It still didn't crush my house. <laughs> I have a quarter size tear in one of my uh, screens, no broken glass. Mm -hmm. I had one little bottle fall off of a ledge. It didn't break. <laughs> um, we had too many angels. I moved my car out of the way. The next day we had the clear. Uh, there's so many little miracles I can't remember them all. But when I went to pick up my car, I keep my radio set on the Christian station. The song that was playing uh, was All I Can Do Is Say Thank You, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. When I went to get the next car, the song had changed to All I Can Do Is Praise You, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Miracles. And I, when, when I came by Friday to check on her, they, the tree company had already got the tree done, and there was minimal structural damage um, to Miss Nancy's home. Wow. And so... Um, the size of that tree had it moved either way I, I, we could have had a different outcome I parked it two inches to the left nothing touched my car <laughs> God provides folks even before we know that we need him Shay did you have a, a prayer concern I do um, Keep 
Yeah, we need to take her a little sunshine. We need to show her Jesus. Sarah, you had something else? I have another prayer of praise. Uh huh. Uh, I'm doing this late training thing with my boss. Mm hmm. Shush up. <laughs> I was really scared about it. I mean, when I say I was scared, I was scared. Um, but it's wonderful. When we go back for like four hours this afternoon. So be, be in prayer for Sarah and Jeremy. They are taking uh, the United Methodist Lay Servant Training uh, Program. They're in the basic course. Um, and so um, pray for them and pray for the other folks that are stepping up uh, to make themselves available to deliver God's word when the pastors can't be there. Um, our Miss Nancy is a lay speaker as well. She's been through the training. And so we are blessed here at Park Avenue to have folks that feel a call to fill in those other. When we when I fall short, um, you all have a have a gift given to you. And it's amazing to see God move. Very much so. Especially with people you don't know need to know mm -hmm. and start saying things. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do we have anything else we need to share with one another? This morning, I want to ask a question as we get ready to pray. If you brought your Bible, I want you to put it in your hand. There you go. If you did not bring your Bible, there is one available in the pew in front of you. It's all right. You have yours on your phone. Just hold your phone. Hold your phone. Miss Leslie received a brand new Bible. And she's ready to break it in. And she asked if we could pray over her Bible. And I thought, what a wonderful idea to pray over all of our Bibles. Those here in our sanctuary, those that we take home with us and study through and learn God's words and wisdom. So as we pray this morning, I want to ask that you hold on to a Bible in your hands or on your phone. And let's not only, I want you to hold it. I'm going to hold Leslie's this morning while I pray. But I want us to be reminded that this is God's love letter to you. To you. It's a personal thing. Don't be afraid to pick it up. Don't be afraid to seek answers. You'll find them. God, as we come before you with your written word, God, we ask that you be with us now. As we open our Bibles, whether it be a hardback, hardcover, whether it's on our phone, our computers, wherever we seek your word, oh God, we ask now that you reveal yourself to us in these Bibles. God, it doesn't matter what translation we use. You just want us to use it. And so, God, we ask that you speak to us, your child, through your written word. Oh, maker of heaven and earth, we thank you for bringing us together this morning to worship you. We're grateful for the ability to tune in, whether we're here in this sanctuary or whether we're tuning in online. Oh God, like the first disciples, we're filled with joy, believing your spirit continues to grant peace to all who work to follow you, the risen Christ. Oh God, in this moment of corporate 
worship and prayer, we gather as your created and redeemed image bearers. We gather as your beloved bride, the church, with minds focused on you and with hearts adoring you. With unity of spirit, oh God, we trust you at all times. Lord, how great you are. You are our refuge and our strength. A very present help in times of trouble. And you alone are our good shepherd. In you there is life with no lack. Oh God, you lead us to green pastures and beside still waters and you restore our anxious and weary souls. Oh God, even in the darkest valleys, we will not fear for you are right here with us. You are always attentive to us. You provide for us. You guide us. You watch behind us and you go before us. Oh God, we find safety, comfort, peace, and joy in your omnipotent and loving nail-scarred hands. Oh God, we cast our fears on you, for you care for us, for nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. As your expectant children, we come to you with humble hearts asking you to protect our families and our friends, protect our congregation, our city, our nation. And oh God, this morning we ask that you protect the entire world, not just our little corner. God, we ask for your attentive presence and, and merciful care on those most vulnerable among us, those most physically vulnerable, emotionally vulnerable, and economically vulnerable. Oh God, we pray for our local, state, city, and national government leaders. God, help us to joyfully and sacrificially be your eyes, your ears, your hands, and your feet to one another, to our neighbors, oh God. And now may the prayers of your people, the songs of our hearts, and the good news shared in scripture and sermon work together to help each of us live fully as disciples of Jesus. In whose name that we pray the Lord's Prayer this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Bow the knee, trust the
Thank you for the honor of praying over your Bible. We invite you now to stand and sing with us. Oh, how he loves you and me. I want you to hear these words and let them soak into your heart this morning. so that we may be in fellowship with him and one another. Let us pray. Loving creator, we come together to present our tithes and offerings. We are reminded of the profound love with which you have called us your children. Help us recognize that our generosity and stewardship of the resources you have entrusted to us are a sign of our commitment to this holy transformation. Now may these offerings we bring today be a reflection of our love for you and our desire to be faithful stewards of your blessings. Bless our giving and guide us in using these gifts wisely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures in the Praise Him above ye heavenly. John, we're moving to chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. I invite you later today to read the rest of the scripture. Um, <coughs> but for the moment, this is what I want us to focus on. Hear now the word of God. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. 
Dear friends, now we are God's children and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be. I've lost my place. We know that when he appears, we will be like him. Because we'll see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. 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 <clears throat> this morning, as we are continuing beyond the Resurrection Sunday, it is so vital to me that you know why we have celebrated the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I can't emphasize it enough how important this is. I can't emphasize enough to you how much you are loved by God. This morning, all right, Sarah, you ready? The one on the bottom. This morning, we are going to, and they'll need a pen, a pen or a pencil. I'm going to hand you out a piece of paper. Well, let me rephrase that. Sarah's going to hand you a piece of paper and a pencil pen. or a pen, whichever one. And then we are going to talk about these pictures. That we see. You're fine. We are going to talk about, as we did this morning with the children, what we see when we look at one another. I put some pictures up here. This morning for you to come by and look at. If you look at this picture here. Let me tell you what I see in this picture. Now it, it helps that I know who these women are. So I get a little better insight. But when I look at this picture what I see is strength. Bossiness. Don't know which one in that picture that could be for. I see someone who is a little bit naive. I see lots of laughter. I see lots of joy. Here's a picture of my four of my grandchildren. I have two more that, that are not in this picture. The first thing I see in these faces is mischief. I'm just saying. I see a twinkle in an eye. I see honoriness. I see joy. This was my birthday last year. They took me out to eat for my birthday. And this is us sitting at the restaurant. Need dust. Us sitting at the restaurant, getting ready to be seated. We had dinner and a show. We went to the Japanese place where they cook in front of you. I have another picture I want to show you. You might recognize these faces. Do you, do you know anybody in that picture, Glenda? Yeah. 
This is a picture that sits in my office. It's one of them that I look to from time to time when I need a little encouragement. I see in this picture, I see some women that are strong in their faith. I see some honoriness. <laughs> It couldn't be this one. She's, she's a sweetheart. But I see things just by looking at their faces. Right? All right, so now I think everybody's got a picture, you girls. That, that, and I gave them one. They have one. Oh, good. They have one. So now I, I, I've got ten pictures that I want us to look at. Now. Here's the biggie. I don't want your churchy answer. I don't want to hear, oh, I see Jesus in him. <laughs> because in a lot of these pictures, I know that's not what you're seeing. I want you to write down by your picture what is the first thing you see when you look at these pictures. So for those at home, let's start with number one. All right? And you may know some of these people, and you may not know who some of these people are. When you look at this picture, what do you think of? Let me write. Don't say it out loud. We're going to write them down. I'm going to write it down here for me, too. All right. Now, this second picture, I'm sure, is going to stir some emotions for some of you. Picture number two. I, I, write down. Write it down. What comes to your mind when you look at that picture? I'll tell you who it is in a minute. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I, I, I heard some faces, saw some faces, and they know who this is. I specifically picked that picture. Everybody got it written down what you, your first thought when you look at the picture of that woman. All right. Let's move on to picture three. Remember, I don't want your church answer. I don't want your good little Christian Sunday school morning answer. I want your true, honest to God. And God knows whether you lying or not because you're sitting in his house. God knows everything. So don't, don't try to write down something. Don't try to write down something that uh, you don't really mean. And this is a woman, by the way. It is. I should, uh, maybe I should have took one of the pictures where she has longer hair. That might have helped. All right, let's look at picture number four. Some of you may know who this is. Some may not. If you notice, that's not a cigarette he's smoking. Just going to say that out in front of you. <laughs> he, he is herbally infused, as one of my favorite TikTokers says. Everybody got that one? Your first impression? All right, now let's look at picture number five. <laughs> Be honest. Come on, God. God knows. He knows what's going on right here. Put it on this piece of paper. Put it on that piece of paper. 
Honesty. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell, I'm going to tell you what I thought when I looked at them. I'm going to give you my answer out loud. But I want you to physically write it down on that piece of paper. All right, let's flip over to number six. What do you think of that one? Once again, these, these are people that you may or may not know. I'm just saying. Number seven. Got on his nice little suit and tie. Looks like maybe he's been to church. Hmm. All right, remember, I want your honesty. Picture number eight. Picture number nine. Kellyanne, we will run back through those pictures in just a second. If you, if you can do that. If not, don't worry about it. All right, everybody had a chance? All right. Let's go back to picture number one. Does anybody know who that is? A rock star. Alice Cooper. All right, tell me what your first, when you looked at that picture, whether you knew who he was or not, what did you think first? Let me hear some answers. Rock star. Rock star. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. God, death, rock and roll. God, God death, death, rock and roll. What? A rebel. A rebel. I put down the devil. And me. Oh, and me. Weird. Me yeah. or you? Mean. M E A N. Mean. Honey, he looks old and tired. Huh? He looks old and tired. Old and tired. <laughs> there you go. All right, so for those of you that don't know who this is, this is Alice Cooper. Let me give you a little bio on Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper, the godfather of shock. Rock is a devout Christian. <laughs> Surprised? In 2006, Alice Cooper shocked many of his most faithful followers when he announced he was turning away from his reckless life and becoming a born again Christian. The longtime music icon is still most famous for his goth music. And appearance. Elaborate live performances. I thought of biting the head off of a bat, but that was Ozzy Osbourne, wasn't it? Yes. And typical rock and roll lifestyle of enjoying women, drugs, and booze. But while Cooper's Christian conversion helped him to move 
past such a harmful lifestyle, he insists he's still a rebel. I relate to that. Drinking beer is easy. Trashing your hotel room is easy. But being a Christian, that's a tough call. That's rebellion. That is a quote from Alice Cooper. That's right. And this is that we're we're getting there. That's what the whole point of this sermon is. All right, folks, those of you of the more wisdom age, picture number two. Trouble. Traitor. Did did you hear that? Trouble, traitor. Peace symbol. I think she's a hater of country. Hate our country? I saw a face back here in the back of the room. I won't call names. But that face turned as blood red with anger as I've ever seen. Am I right? Uh huh. And the reason I say that is because I have heard my own father talk about this woman right here. Those of you that know who Jane Fonda is, and those of you that don't, Jane Fonda, um, back during the Vietnam War, tell me if I'm wrong, if it was Vietnam, correct? She went to the enemy side. She was protesting this war. She sat on one of their machine guns and looked through the scope at our military men through their machine gun. I would say it probably during that time she was probably one of the very most hated women in our country. Am I wrong? When actress Jane Fonda announced in 2001 that she had converted to Christianity, perhaps no one was more surprised than Fonda herself. As she put it, I always assumed I was an atheist. In 2006, Fonda revealed to Charlie Rose that she had found Christianity during a time of crisis in her life. She admitted her conversion likely played a part in ending her 10-year marriage to Ted Turner, a staunch atheist. Fonda now refers to Christianity as her spiritual home. Whoo. Like I said, I remember the things my daddy said about her. One of the reasons I picked her. All right, number three. Nadia Bowles Weber is who this woman is. But I want to know, what was your first thought when you looked at her picture? Different. Different. Tattoos. Tattoos. Bad bleep. Huh? Bad bleep. Bad bleep. Rebel. 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 I mean, it wasn't bleep. But mischief. No, no, no. Mischief. 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 Oh, that's mild, yeah. Mischief. I have to tell you that this happens to be one of my favorite people. This is Nadia Bowles Weber, and I have a, a bigger section about Nadia than, than I do the others, but Nadia is an American author. Are you ready for this? She is a Lutheran pastor and a public theologian. She served as the founding pastor of House for All Sinners and Saints. And it is a congregation of evangelical Lutherans in Denver, Colorado. Nadia is known for her unusual approach to reaching others through her church. 
She has produced work in the church that scholar and written Diana Butler Bass considers part of a new reformation. Bowles Weber began to acquire tattoos in 1986 at the age of 17. Those present on her arms mark the liturgical year and the story of the gospel. She attended Pepperdine University briefly before dropping out and moving to Denver. She became an alcoholic and a drug abuser and often felt like one of society's outsiders. In 1991, she became sober and as of 2020 has remained sober for 28 years. Now prior to her ordination, she was a stand-up comedian and she worked in the restaurant industry. I love her. Some of you would, would be so offended by her. <laughs> she cusses. She tells you like it is, whether you like it or not. Her goal is to reach people that other people want nothing to do with. Her church is made up of a lot of sinners, drug addicts, prostitutes. Huh, who else hung out with people like that? Just saying. There are also atheists that attend this woman's church. They're hearing the word of God. So that's my spiel. Do you need a drink? All right. Let's go to picture number four. Shay. Who is that? That is the man. The man? <laughs> Bob Marley. Bob Marley. What do y'all know about Bob Marley? Huh? <laughs> but had you not known who this was and, and, and had maybe I not pointed out that that was not a cigarette in his mouth and you knew what it was he was smoking, what might have been your thoughts? What was your first impression of the picture of Mr. Marley? Drug user. Drug user. Toasted. What? Toasted. Toasted. Anybody else? What? Cancer. This is not someone that you would. And the other thing, and, and so this is why, I'm going to tell you why I, I chose to put Bob Marley up here. Any of you that know anything about him, he uh, was of a religion called Rafta. Um, Raf's, Rafsteran. It, it, he's from Jamaica, one of my favorite places on earth. And so it's kind of like a, a voodoo kind of religion. But according to what, and Bob Marley died of cancer. Because in his religion, he did not believe in medical treatment. Have you ever listened to some of Bob Marley's songs? Shay said the magic word back there. Bob Marley wanted us to know love. There's a restaurant in Haywood County called One Love. He served Jamaican food. Also some wonderful biscuits and gravy from what I understand. But according to this, Marley routinely spoke publicly about his Rasta faith. But it's widely believed that he was baptized as an Orthodox Christian 
by the Archbishop of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church in the Western Hemisphere just before his death in 1981. That thrilled me because the words of his songs, I hear Jesus in. All right, number five. I saw some, some strong reactions from this one. Big mouth. Big mouth. Yikes. What? Yikes. Yikes. I thought the same thing. Yikes was. Do what? Play it louder. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. I saw scary. Hippie. Scary was what I saw. Anybody else? Hippie. Huh? Hippie. Hippie? Yeah, look at them dreadlocks, man. Great long ones. So let me tell you about this person here. This person here, for those of you that may not know, and I didn't know who it was. His name is Brian Welch. His nickname's Head, H-E-A-D. If you're not familiar with the music of corn, anybody recognize that? Corn? Yep. Yep. Heavy metal. There we go. Yeah. Consider this. The Chicago Tribune called the rap metal band perverts, psychopaths, and piranhas. The group's songs with titles like Freak on a Leash and Make Me Bad often have lyrics that are sexually explicit and very, very dark. So can you imagine fans' shock when in 2005 the band released a statement informing the public that they had parted ways with their rock guitarist Brian the Head Welch who had chosen the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior and will be dedicating his musical pursuits to that end. Though some thought it was a practical joke, Welch showed up to the Valley Bible Fellowship Church the following Sunday and told the crowd of 10,000 people, I am the happiest man in the world right now. Hmm. Wasn't my first thoughts. Number six. Nice beard. Nice beard. Looks like your brother. <laughs> yes, he does. That's what I wrote too. Dano. Dano. Any other thoughts on what this this man brings to your mind when you look at this picture? I said lightning struck, but that's my own thing. Lightning struck? What's the homeless? Yeah, no, homeless? No, no, yeah. Homeless? Oh no, he looks like he's hiding out. Hiding out? Yeah. Huh? Do what? Get her done. Get her done. <laughs> All right, who can tell me who this is? Not from the back. You don't count. Huh? David Crowder. He is one of my all-time favorite Christian artists. He is amazing. A lightning I just got to see him in person for the first time ever at Jam Nation when Danny and I went to the Winter Christian Jam. concert in Charlotte, Winter Jam. Huh. This man sings some of the most powerful Christian music I've ever heard in my entire life. All right, number six. Or number number seven. Sorry, number seven. Old. Old? Politician. Politician? Conservative leader. Conservative leader. Conservative. 
conservative. What else? Anything else about this man? Huh? Preacher. I said little old, old little old church man was my thought. So any of you that may not know, this is Bill Hayden. And he is a famous Australian politician and Australia's second longest serving governor general who made no secret of his atheism. But he has converted to Christianity at the age of 85. Lifelong atheist till the age of 85. And he becomes a Christian. Then he met up with Bob Marley. All right, number eight. Islamic. Islamic. Sisters. Sisters? Brave. Huh? Brave. Brave. I also said faking happiness. Said what? Faking happiness. If you're like me, when I looked at that, I saw Muslims. Are we being honest? You saw beautiful? I saw friends. Friends? So let me tell you about these three women right here. These are three of the leading women. Leading conversion to Christianity amongst the Muslims. They still wear their jihad, jihads. But those are three Christian women. Number nine. All right, Sarah, let me hear it. Huh? Earbiter. <laughs> Earbiter. <laughs> huh? That's not Mike Tyson. That's not Mike Tyson. Whatever. But I, but I get it. Champ. Champ. Ready for action. Ready for action. Fighter. I don't a fighter. That's what I saw. I saw a fighter. What do you see, Anne Marie? So who is this? Who knows who this is? Not Mike Tyson. Holyfield. Evander Holyfield. Yes. A Boxing legend Evander Holyfield. <sighs> Holyfield is a Christian. He says the word of God steadies me. He says your trials and tribulations make you who you are so you can see my whole story. In the way I endured and overcome some testing experiences. Evander Holyfield. All right, last picture. Number 10. I'm a gang member. Gang members? I said no, thug. No, no, no. No, no, no. I, I said thug. Yo, yo, yo. yo, yo, yo. Rappers. Rappers? They are very colorful. Yeah? What? Anything? Uncle Sam wants you. Uncle Sam wants you. <laughs> that is the last thing. So, let me tell you about the gentleman on the left in this picture. His name is Lecrae. Devon, Lecrae Devon Moore to be more exact, and he is an American rapper, singer, songwriter, record and film producer, record, record, record executive, actor, and entrepreneur. And this is a quote from him. I've learned the enemy often uses politics, social media, and scandal to understanding and for Scandal to make sure we're angry, judgmental, divisive, and crave condemnation for others more than mercy. 
understanding, and forgiveness for them. Lecrae is a Christian rapper. Not exclusively. But he is a Christian. This man is a Christian. When Danny and I went to uh, Winter Jam, he was one of the performers. I had never seen this man live. This man exuded Jesus Christ. I couldn't understand a word he was saying hardly. Thank goodness there were subtitles on the screen behind him. <laughs> but let me tell you, I saw Jesus in this man rapping. He had a glow about him. I'm not even kidding you. I was in shock. We cannot judge a book by its cover. I have one more picture that isn't on your paper that I want you to look at. Anybody want to offer up what you see when you looked at that picture? What was your first thought? Huh? Missionaries? Is that what you said? Come on. God knows what you're thinking or what you thought. Immigrant. Immigrant. Anybody else? Thank you for your honesty. This couple right here. They look like Latino. Look like what? Latino? Yes, ma'am. This couple right here are part of a large movement of Christianity in Mexico. Now, the scary part is, as I was doing this research, these folks here face drug cartel every day single day. They are seeked after to kill them. They don't mind if they're part of a religion, but they don't want them to be Christian because Christians do the right things. These folks are on the front line in Mexico trying to share the gospel. Now, they're natives, as you can tell. They're natives. They live in some of the roughest areas in Mexico where people just want to be able to love Jesus and worship Jesus the way you do. They don't want to have to live in fear of dying because of who they love and who loves them. I know there are some very strong opinions about our border, and I have them as well. It needs reform, and it needs it in a bad, bad way. I'm not going to deny that. But as I told the little children this morning, and I'm going to tell you, I want you to look at each other, and I want you to look each other in the eye. Look around. Look at, I, I mean it. Look at each other in your eyes. Look at their faces. When you look at someone... What? Oh, I know, they're so sweet. I love it. When you look in the face of someone, you are looking in the face of someone that God loves. We just looked at some diverse people. Some people that our first gut reactions might be, oh, I don't want to meet you in a dark alley. But come to find out, guess what? They're just like you and me. They love Jesus. 
Jesus. We've got to quit looking at people in our world that look different, talk different, act different, come from different places and different religions and cultures as if they are the enemy. Because let me tell you, they're not. They are your brothers and sisters. They are your neighbors. The table needs to be made bigger, not the wall higher. Let me say it again. We need reform at our borders. But there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. When you see those immigrants, those that we uh, automatically want to assume that they are illegals or that they're terrorists because they have the turbans on or the jihabs, you might be surprised to know that they believe in the same God you do. And that according to our scripture this morning, they are children of God. We all are. Amen. Amen. We all are children of God. You will never look into the face of someone that God does not love. That's right. That's right. So we, as those that already know Jesus, we are supposed to be meeting people where they are. Not assuming that we know where they are by the way they look or where they come from or what church doors they step outside of. They are our brothers and our sisters. All people. We are all of one blood. What blood is that? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We're all of one blood. We might come from different family lines. Our DNA might show up different. But this is our DNA, folks. That relationship that we have with God. One of my favorite stories, and I know I've run long today. One of my favorite stories in all of the Bible is the story of the prodigal son. Who knows that story? I got one. You got one. Some of us probably do have prodigal children. But my favorite part of that story is that when that son, child, decided to come home, the old man didn't sit on the porch and go, well, let's see what he's got to say for himself. He didn't wait on that child to come to him. The father hiked up his skirt and took off running and met the child. He didn't wait on him to get there and beg forgiveness. He met him where he was. That's what our God does. That's why I told you last Sunday, I don't care what you did on Saturday night, you are welcome at this table every time communion is served. Because God's going to meet you where you are. But you have to meet him. You gotta be willing to come home. You gotta be willing to come home. According to my belief. He is a gentleman. He loves everybody. Loves everybody.
Both. Both. We, we know, and this is what we believe, this is what our faith believes, is that we are all created by God, right? So therefore, that makes us all children of God. Now, we are given free will to make choices in our lives. But the thing is, we have a man that we saw a picture of that his whole entire life, he denied and denounced that God was real. And at 85 years old, he had that aha moment. God met him where he was in a hospital bed. That's what, that's what brought him to the faith, was he was in a hospital dying. God will meet you where you are. God meets each of us where we are. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called God's children. Friday of Easter, he died upon a cross because he loves us and he loves them. He loves me. And then on Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. And as Miss Nancy taught the children this morning about doubting Thomas, he came once again. He didn't wait on the disciples to come to him. He came to them in the upper room. Here I am. Touch me. Believe me. We are all God's children. Amen. Folks, we better start acting like it. Because we're not doing that. The airstrikes that we've had, the wars that we have going on in Ukraine and Israel, that's not us loving one another, folks. Us locking people out of our churches is not us loving one another. Us thinking that I know more than some of these people in these pictures. Or one of you thinking that I'm better than you because I happen to stand in this pulpit and bring you the word of God. I'm not any better than you. I am a child of God. Look at your brothers and sisters. When you leave here today and you go out to lunch or you go home and have a sandwich and you're watching television and you see people on TV if you're watching the news, folks, as hard as it is, Vladimir Putin is a child of God. Now, as Miss Betty said, he has a choice to make. Jesus washed Judas's feet. None of us are perfect. None of us are better than anyone else. On June the 15th, we're going to have a block party out here in our church parking lot. And I hope and I pray, my prayer is that all of our neighbors come and I hope and I pray that it's not just the ones that look like us. We need to know our neighbors. We've got to get outside of this building and share Jesus Christ. We won't do our closing song today because I do have a sermon song that I want to play today. So that's going to be our closing hymn today. I want you to hear the words of this song. 
I want you to know when you walk out of this place that you are a child of God and that Nancy's a child of God. Brother Dale's a child of God. Heck, even Jim Cheek's a child of God. And those folks we encounter are children of God. When you look at their face, you're looking at someone that God loves. You may not like them. Trust me, there's people I don't like looking at. I'm just being honest. But I know that God loves them. And I'm going to love them to the best of my ability. I don't have to agree. I don't have to be buddy-buddy. I don't have to hang out and socialize. But I've got to love them. And pray that they're letting God love on them. And that they love them. And move beyond what I think I know about them. And everyone who has this hope in him, him being Jesus purifies himself even as Jesus is pure. It doesn't exclude there, folks. This book is full of inclusion. It's far more full of inclusion than it is separation. As Jeremy said, we can always go to this paper. Servant song.
what they felt, empty, rejected, anxious. But when he would take their picture, what came out on the Polaroid? Did you read that? It said, Beloved. Because guess what? That's what God sees. He sees that we are his beloved. He knows that we're carrying around this baggage, folks. But he wants to make sure that you know that you are his beloved. The young man that sings that song has a severe stutter. Severe. But when he sings, there's no stutter. Reminds me of the male too. Folks, when God sees you, he sees his beloved. When he sees all these other people that we don't want to meet up with in a dark alley, like I said, with to begin with, God sees his beloved. We've got to stop looking at each other as if we're the ones. Because we're, we're the children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to invite you now to stand, receive your benediction, and you're uh, sorry you're not going to meet, meet the Baptist to, to lunch today. Receive now. You're sending forth. By God's amazing grace, we are the body of Christ. And because of that, let us go into the world in peace and courage, holding to the good, honoring all God's children, loving and serving the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Now I belong to Jesus.